This is the perfect example of a vlog that goes somewhere where you never thought it would go. Mic check one, two! Mic check one, two! What? I don't get it. If you flip the screen around, you can see the microphone indicator indicator. Well, if I flip the noise. screen around, I have to... You're fired from the B-roll. Okay, where are we going, people? Give me your We are going to the United States of the Americas. We are crossing. We're, cro we're crossing a border. I did not bring the passports. I did. Okay. I did. It's a garden. I'll explain it to you when I made the car. Oh, ice shacks. Ice shacks. It's the ice shack. It's a little old place where we can go ice fishing. Life's a beach. Um, <laughs> Barney, would you be a deer and move? So interesting story about these about these border towns. Marion behind the camera was raised on a border town. When we first met the year of our first dating, half of her entire village was arrested for drug smuggling across the border. I think half is an exaggeration. Half of the village. One third. One third. Uh, passports. We need passports. Okay. We're at the border crossing. Yeah. Border crossing. I hope you have passports. Okay, turn off now. We are now in the Americas. It looks so different. I think they have more snow. They have more snow and the houses are actually a different style. Oh, look at those things. Marshmallows. Marshmallows. You see those marshmallows? Yummy! Bring it back over here for a second. So, a uh, funny story about those marshmallows. I don't know if you guys Are know you this story. Me? That was the first Stop one of the first. That story. One of the first lawsuits I ever had was the farmer who got the marshmallow wrap and was complaining that the wrap was actually rotting his uh, his feed for the winter because uh, they use that to wrap the feed that they wrap the feed the cows in the winter. It's a true story. It's what? Look at the bird. Uh, that's Lake Champlain, and then when you get onto the Canadian side, it's called Massisqua Bay. Same body of water. It's still called Lake Champlain. It's not called Lake Champlain in Quebec. Yes, it is. You want to make a bet? Yes. <laughs> a thousand billion dollars. It's just a bay that happens. It is not. In it is called Missisquoi Bay. Look at the geese. Alberg, yay old print shop. You're missing the yay old print shop. Oh my goodness, yay old print shop. Yeah, can, can we go there, Daddy? Yeah, yeah. Ethan, your friends are here. Should I honk and scare the kid? Alberg, Vermont. Okay, let's do that. I, th I think you've been in a video before. Do you mind that if I mention, in addition to our wives being friends, I was once your lawyer? Yes. No, you I don't. No, you don't, I don't mind me. No, I do not mind. Yes. <laughs> We are on Lake Champlain behind us. Oh, shh, shh, shh. Oh my goodness, look at that. Whoa. Hey, Fred, what's with all the duck decoys? Okay, talking to. I just hit your kid in the face, I'm sorry. <laughs> We we get got, over I got it. slobber on my hand. Talking to a non-hunter, what do the duck decoys do? They attract or they recreate regular ducks. So when the real duck sees it, he thinks it's his buddies and he comes and lands with them. And that's the point at which you shoot them? Yes. And then after that, you clean them and you eat them. Do you have any? First? Yes, I do. This is going to be good. Barbecue boys, let's do it! <laughs> go time. freezing. It's like four degrees. I'm still freezing. <laughs> Barney, meanwhile, is on another realm of attentive this year. It's actually very cool. Fred's dad lives there. Fred uses this as a cottage, and this over here, good fishing and good hunting out here. This is amazing. This is amazing. The people who come out here are mostly for hunting and fishing, or? No, it's people that come for the, for the summer. 
Huh. Summer weekends I have, we had last year a lot of people from Virginia, New Jersey uh, coming for four or five days either to have weddings or events in the Burlington, Swanton, Ross Point area. Uh, some people just come for vacation for a couple of days, swim, because they have access to the kayaks that are in the garage. And, uh, oh, morning, morning, morning. Come on, come on. We're going to get charged a cleaning fee. <laughs> Anna? You came already? <laughs> hi. Anna, say hi to the world. Hi. <laughs> this is amazing. Yeah, you can't really get closer to the water. Uh, children? Everyone's got to count the duck themed motifs in the house. Duck. Duck? No. Okay. <laughs> duck toilet paper man? Oh, wow. Duck, there's a duck painting right here. Oh, there's a duck thing by the wedding picture. Duck. Duck. Oh, duck painting, duck bedspread. That's not your bed, Barney, get off of it. This is turning into a full hunting episode. Fred is gonna show us how to reload uh, shotgun cartridges. This is called target load. So we basically reload those to practice during the off season uh, on clay targets. So that's an empty shell. You can reuse a used empty shell. Right? Not all of them, but there's a recipe book. Is it called the Anarchist Cookbook? No, it's called <laughs> Shot Shell Reloading Handbook. So you got a load, uh, different recipes, the amount of powder charge, uh, amount of ounces of uh, lead you have to put in, type of wads and uh, primers that you gotta use. It's not that I don't feel safe being in the company of shotgun pellets, explosive powder, and lead um, projectiles, but uh, what what prevents this from? This is this is gunpowder in here. No, uh, that one ha that one here is the one that has the gunpowder, and the other one is the oh, the lead the lead shot. Oh, well those are those are very so, small. It's much smaller than I thought it was gonna be. Well, those, those are seven and a half. So those are seven and a half. They're practiced for reloading. Normally for ducks or geese, you'll shoot number twos or number fours. Bigger or smaller? Bigger. So we have the powder, we have the shots, we have the primer. Hold on one second. Duck motif. Duck motif. Ah! Eight pounds of smokeless gunpowder. What happens if you drop a match in there? Nothing. I'm just going to burn. Oh. I see. The way it works, in uh, the primer, you have white powder. When you put that in the gun, there's a little hammer that hits that. Yep, causes it, the spark. It, it sparks, and then it lights the smokeless powder. When the smokeless powder burns, there's a gas. The gas expands, and it pushes the shot out. So smokeless powder is very stable. It does not explode. Unless it's in... A contained con environment. That's a used... Spent, I believe is the word. I'm such a hunter, I know the terms. That is a spent cartridge. The primer is the thing that causes the initial spark, which ignites the gunpowder, which then expands, causes the increase in pressure, and then forces the projectiles out. That's it. A little handle down. Those bars have holes. There's a hole here for the shot to fall in, and there's a hole here with a bushing for the powder to fall in. You got powder in there now. Yep, I will put the wads. The powder is going to be underneath here, and it creates an enclosed environment. Let me see that wad for a second. This absorbs the sh part of the shock, this part here, and that is like a container where the shots are going to be. All the components are in. Now, over here on the machine, we got two different stages to close them up. That's what they call a half crimp. Put it to the other one. And you've got a full crimp. And that is now a live shotgun cartridge. Hmm. How hard do you have to hit the primer to cause the reaction? Could I do it with it. a physical hammer and a yes, nail? Yes, but it's gonna blow up in your face. S S S scratch that idea. <laughs> <laughs> I got a whole duck for you. You don't want to hold the duck? Oh, is that cool? That's amazing. That's like it's like just like a fuse. Yep. That's really cool. Nope, he's back. This is Marion's nervous face. I just want everyone to know how I know Anna. Anna and I did our PhD together <laughs> in science, but she has a lot of skills. She's a very well-rounded person. This is an actual shotgun. Yeah, and when someone hand, uh, hands her a gun, I always have to make sure that it's open. Yes. Because it, that's how you know that it's not loaded. There's a lot of common sense when it comes to guns. Turn it here. See, it's this color, which means that this is locked now. Mm -hmm. So even if this I would was see a closed, red. I would imagine I would see a red button. Yeah, red means danger. Red means the international sign of danger. <laughs> yeah. This is the perfect example of a vlog that goes somewhere where you never thought it would go. Safety's off. Oh my gosh, that is. <laughs> my goodness. Oh. Observation. Uh, the trigger pulled very easily. <laughs> Let's go see where I hit this duck. Look at this. I actually hit it. 
it in. Oh my gosh, that is so cool. You can see the pellet marks this way here. Can I actually see? Holy cow, so. Goodness, that would be a, that would be a, that would be a dead duck in hunting, right? Yes, it would. Kids, we're eating duck tonight, I'll tell you what. You hear that, you hear that rattle? I am officially. I am officially able to provide I for the family. About you every day. Can you just say exactly what you just said again? I said I wouldn't be too upset if you went out and brought back meat. Do you see what you've done, Anna? You've created a monster now. <laughs> All right, we're doing one last experiment in the name of science. Apparently, the shotgun has a 30-inch spread at 30 meters, so we've made a makeshift target. And I want to see how good I actually am at 30 meters. I was high on all of them, but that is the spray. We came to document the boat launch, but it ended up being an episode about shotguns and... Look at that. First try. 